2006 Ford F-150 Super Cab STX, a traditional vehicle that continued the trend of pickups being increasingly sold as daily street vehicles rather than work vehicles. <laughs> The GM CK pickups was the first time that an automaker had really considered selling a pickup for the general buy-in public rather than just as a worker toy vehicle. The second generation Dodge Rams showed the world that trucks can be cool. Then Ford took things possibly too far with the 10th generation Ford F-150 and the other grown quest for aerodynamics and fell well into the jelly bean phase of Ford. This is the 11th generation of the Ford F-150, codenamed P-221. This was Ford realizing their mistake and injecting some macho angles back into their flagship pickup truck. On the outside, despite being essentially a design evolution of the Taurus F-150, underneath it was very much a very different vehicle. Sitting on the modified P-2 platform, which took the first generation Ford Super Duty chassis, and they chopped it and narrowed it to fit under the smaller F-150 body. Underneath the hood you had three options, the carryover 4.2 liter Essex V6, the carryover, well, 2006 was the last year of it, 4.6 liter Triton V8, and the freshly updated 5.4 liter Triton V8. Drivetrains were largely updates of the existing Ford parts bin, with the 5-speed manual only being available on two-wheel drive V6 models, and the trusty 4-speed automatic being available everywhere else. Fun note, the 11th generation F-150 was the last vehicle that Ford put the pushrod V6 into. Heading outside, the Super Duty theme continues with the Super Duty-esque grille. On the doors, they also carried over the Kenworth Daylight doors from the Super Duty. The P221 F-150 also adds plenty of plastic cladding on some of the other trims, as that was the style at the time. But this SXT model actually color matches much of the plastic. I won't comment too much on the body and trim fit on this particular model, as it has almost 240,000 miles and has hit a deer in the last year. Some things are very loosey-goosey in the grill and bumper department, but yeah, this was definitely a step forward exterior-wise in design. I don't like the Jelly Bean F-150, but the added sculpted body lines in the F-150 and the Super Duty-inspired design cues work a lot better on this truck. Inside, the dash is very square in design, and other than that, it's a pretty low-level package truck. Things are old, worn, and very much cheap. Remember, SXT was only like a step up from the base XL model. Remember when I said this was pretty much a traditional period for pickup trucks? Yeah, you can still get a bare bones truck today, but in terms of creature comforts and fit and finish and everything, it's still leaps and bounds over where trucks still were in the mid 2000s. And yeah, this is a well worn, well used work truck. The hand crank windows creak when you crank them. The circle cut and the rubber mat on the dash tray, it's been there since the owner bought the truck, most likely from a long gone GPS unit. Manual side mirrors, they're beyond stiff and haven't been adjusted in years. The seats are well worn from long drives to the shop. When noise seeps in, the door jams quite loudly. And everything just simply creaks and rattles apart as you're driving down the road. And yeah, it drives exactly how it looks and feels. The 4.6 liter Triton V8 was never the powerhouse in the lineup, but she's pretty tired. The front end rattles over rougher city roads. The front end is, is planted as a 14-year-old pickup truck with almost 240,000 miles will allow, which is not much at all. I've used this in other pickup truck reviews, but simply it's just an old work truck. Starts up, gets to work, and gets you home. The owner is thankful that this is a 4.6 model instead of the 5.4. The 5.4s were notorious for some early teething problems, most notably being their two-piece spark plugs. With the smaller motor, he also feels it's easier to service. He says that he has to regularly change ignition coils, and for the most part, they're easy for him to get to. Overall, despite all the miles that he and the previous owner put on it, the biggest problem he's had was the aforementioned deer incident. 
for the most part, the bodywork is fixed. And somehow he didn't kill his transmission cooler and AC condenser when they met each other on impact, as they're pretty twisted in here. Another little quirk from the incident is that the hood latch sometimes doesn't work when you go to pull it. So, yeah, that's a quirk. But he's got it fixed up and everything's fitting for the most part, and he plans on driving this truck well into the ground. He himself has got plenty of miles in this truck, and now it's his second vehicle after buying the Mazda 3 in episode 23. As all good work trucks are, this old girl will start without hesitation, and like I mentioned in plenty of other truck reviews, that's all you can really ask for with something like this. By the end of its run, the 11th generation of F-150 had received an increased number of options and appearance packages, and the over-competitive half-ton pickup truck market they had to step up their game once again with the 12th generation. And they certainly did with better interiors, much improved engines, and finally the step up to a 6-speed automatic. The engines I mentioned, this included the first introduction of the EcoBoost V6s. Then, they would come out with a little off-road version known as the Raptor. But, that's kind of so, something of its own beast. And then Ford would continue this evolution with the 13th generation where they would move to a aluminum body. But, all in all, this is just a simple work truck. Kind of a callback to trucks of yesteryear where you kind of rolled into the work site, kind of beat on it, throw your tools in the back, have your morning coffee in the cup holder, and hopefully she starts up. 2006 Ford F-150 Super Cab STX. As much as Ford wanted this to be a giant step forward to better sell as a people mover, it's still pretty much a simple work truck. Thank you for watching another episode of Wookie Drives. Once again, thank you to Brent of Pleasant Garden, North Carolina for letting me drive your old work truck. If you have a vehicle you'd like to have me film for the show and happen to be in the Charlotte Mooresville area, Please send the official Facebook page at facebook.com slash drives a message, and we'll try to work something out. Go ahead and follow that page in my Twitter, at TV for updates and shenanigans. Be sure to give the video a like, drop a comment, and be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future Wookie Drives. Anyways, thank you for watching, and have a good night. Tunnel cover, bed extender, bug deflector, chrome bug deflector. Make your truck as individual as you are with the Ford Custom Truck Event. Get $1,000 in genuine Ford accessories at no extra charge with the purchase or lease of any Ford truck. I'm thinking a Class 3 hitch. Oh, yeah. The Custom Truck Event, on now at your Ford store.